The eyes of Texas are upon us. How's the song go? Uh, that's enough of it for me. That's enough. Uh, that's enough. I that's don't want to talk about the Tyler Rose. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about football. I agree. I agree. And here we go. The season starts on Saturday. This is a game that's been in anticipation to me for about five years until Mr. Herman became the coach of the Texas Longhorns. And now the game is a headache to me. It's a headache to you. We're 18 uh, point underdogs, Wayne. Got Wayne Viner, Mason Viner, you know him from the website, you know him from all the videos, you know him as my good friends, and uh, you know him from Turp Talk. Wayne's known by everybody now, after I've spread his name around the world. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> just by the way, yes. before we get back to this game, uh, today marks the beginning of the sixth year of doing this with you, so I want to say, Everybody's listening. But Since it's on TV, I'll shake your hand. Oh, yeah. Right. This will be up on Turn Talk Mason, later. I'll shake yours because you've been a great asset. So this is the uh, sixth opening game. And it's a tough one. It's one of the better opening games that we've had. I'm happy that Maryland finally took up the challenge to have an interesting first game. Like the great one Ric Flair has always said, to be the best, you got to beat the best. Now, Texas isn't exactly the best. I'm not even sure they're good but they're considered a lot better than the Orioles. Well, then the Terrapins here. Uh, the Terrapins. 18, 18 points. 18 points scares me. Three and a half wins for the season for Maryland scares me. Mason, I'm going to leave this to you because you've really been covering this. Listen to his podcast on TurpTalk.com with his older brother. Uh, fantastic. They really delve deeply into all the subjects. Mason, tell me how Tyrell Pagrome has changed and can win this game or lead the Terps this year? The only way that I see that he's changed and can win this game for the Terps is if he can throw the ball deep down the field. Last year we saw all the abilities to be an explosive runner, but we just didn't see it with the arm. That's what you're going to have to see if we have the Terps coming out on top in this one. He can throw the ball 70 yards in the air. The question is, can he hit what he's aiming at? And he, right now, to me, he's about equal. In the press conference yesterday, and that's up on TurpTalk.com, somebody asked DJ, do you have 100% confidence in Terrell in throwing the ball? And DJ said, I'm, I'm 100%. So, Bruce? I, you know what? I hope it's right. All right. Now, I did you know, I didn't know that you got, it, got him on an interview. I watched it the other day among the thousands of others that have watched it out there. And he did seem, to me, bigger, more mature, more confident, but to me last year, it was a long way to go, and I just don't know if he's ready. Well, there, apparently there's nobody else, because the guy that I had picked early on... By the way, the Orioles just took the lead. Which is 8-7 here, and it's gonna, the inning's going to end right there. That's weird. Why would Barry have tried to swear? I wasn't watching it close enough. Go ahead, 8-7 with Britton coming on. And I lost my place, but I'll get back on. The guy that I thought that was going to start is Caleb Henderson. He transferred in from North Carolina. Mason, where did he go to high school? He went to high school at Lake Braddock, which is in Northern Virginia. He was a four-star coming out of there. Maryland had high hopes for him after transferring in from North Carolina. But he broke his foot, and he's still in a boot, as far as we know. The last time I went to practice last week, he was running around in a boot. So that left Piggy. Borton Schlager and Kasim Hill. Bruce, why would you not start a freshman when you go to the Texas with 100,000 people? No, it's the right move. I think that's part of the move that uh, uh, Pagrom has played all over. He played a lot last year. He was up and down, but he does have the experience. And I kind of thought it would be Borton Schlager to start against Texas because he's bigger, he's taller. But what I'm worried about with Pagrom is. First of all, we'll make a prediction. What are the odds another quarterback gets in the game? 100% for me. Yeah, I agree. Now, that's not because he's doing bad, but I think that Durkin's going to test the waters a little bit. This is not a conference game. This is not a game I think to say we're likely to win. I think he's going to test the waters. Go ahead, uh, Jordan. I'm with uh, Mason. I see it as testing the waters not so much, but they're coming into this game with confidence that Kasim can throw the ball better or equal than Pig Rome, and they just want to see what he's got. 
But even though it's not a conference game, these guys want to win every game, and you know they're going to put maximum effort into winning on Saturday. I would sure hope so, because huh. this is, you know, this is one of this is believe it or not. A winnable game. I know that sounds I so. crazy. I think so. It sounds like I'm like losing my mind. I'm not being a homer because I've been on the negative side of how they're going to do this year. I'm more anxious for next year when we got some uh, some more weapons coming in. But uh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong that they uh, you know that they're not don't have much of a chance. But this is not a great Texas team that we're playing. Hey, they're ranked 23rd. The biggest. That's just because the name says Texas. And because Tom Harmon's been a good coach. But when you change a complete system, which is what Texas is going to do, they still have Bushell in. Mason, why why does that give you an opportunity? What type of offense does Herman run? Well, when you're looking at the offense that Todd Herman ran at Houston, it's a space-based offense. There's no direct route for the receivers. So you're looking at an offense that changed from what Charlie Strong had in, which was a more of a traditional offense, to a team that will now ask its receivers to find open space in an area instead of running to a direct point. Also with a quarterback that can't run the ball as well as Greg Ward could last year at Houston, which made them so successful was the dual threat. Shea Bouchel last year, 236 for 391 with 11 interceptions and 21 TDs, 60% uh, completion, 2,958 yards, but they still went 3-6 and six in the Big 12 and 5-7 and seven overall. And they played a two-quarterback system last year with Tyrone Swoops, who was their red zone quarterback, really big guy. He was a load. Yeah. What happened to him? Is he, is he graduated? Or yes, he I close? believe so. And, you know, he would kind of fit into an NFL tight end role. He would. So Bouchel started 12 games, and he guided the Texas to five wins, which ties, of all people, Bobby Lane for the most ever for a freshman Texas. Now, at the running back spot, Texas rolls in there with uh, Chris Warren the third, And he didn't play last much last year. He, he got injured early. So with Bouchel, who's got 12 games of experience, Chris Warren, it's not a sense that they don't have the players. It's just I've heard from people, uh, from Dino Babbers and from other people who run the spread offense that it takes a while for people who play in it to figure out where to go and where the ball's going to go. So maybe we have a chance because they're going to be confused. D.J. Dirk in his second year has promised big changes. The defense is going to be more sudden. It's going to be more impactful. Uh, there's some changes up front, but we often key in on the linebackers because they have a lot of tackles in the system. You know what the key word is on the depth chart? Or. Or. Very well. Very, very good. Or. So he's got a depth chart here. I'm not sure what it means. He's going to play everybody. He's going to play everybody. But he's showing Chandler Burkett starting at, uh, at end. And uh, I think Kingsley O'Para is not an or. No, he's Although Adam McClain is going to see sometime. Finally. All right. Finally is right. Uh, well, he's only a sophomore. Right. Savon Walker. Oh, he's in there for the long haul. Right. But there's a war there. Yes. All right. With those say saying, but. Uh, we're going to rotate. It's going to be in the 90s. They're playing on plastic. Is it still AstroTurf there or field turf or is it grass? I am not sure we'll about that. We'll figure that, that out. Keep going. Uh, Shane Cockrell's back. And you're, I'm here on. You know, Durkin said he's got a shot to be a fullback in the, in the, uh, in the, next, at the next level, and yet he's still playing linebacker. He is playing linebacker, and the fact that he's playing at all, DJ went into depth. I, this is one part of the press conference. If you want to watch one part, watch this. When he talks about Cockrell, and they said they told him what he needed to do, and they left it on him to do it, and they were very surprised he did everything he was required to do, plus to get back on that team. They figured if he was gone, he was gone, and it was so far removed that he might come back. They gave his number away. So you used to him as a number wearing number two. He's now wearing number eighteen, I believe. Hmm. You know who wore that? Vernon Davis. Oh, the Duke. Vernon right. Davis. Yes. Eighteen. I never understood that number for a wide receiver, but he wore eighteen. Oh, a lot of these guys did change your number. Mason went through it. So we have so many single-digit defensive linemen. It's crazy. Right. Do we have any uh, copy numbers of the same, like we always do, or well, not that there, many? Yes, there's a couple of twos, there's a couple of sixes. Um, and number one on both sides of the ball will be DJ Moore at receiver, and Jermaine Carter Jr. is now number one, the star linebacker. Wow. 
I wonder if there's some um, honor to that number now, especially like with what's happened. You know, wasn't Stefan number one? Stefan was number one. Uh, Maryland's best players wear number one. Even Matt Rambo wears number one. Well, lacrosse has been going on forever, but we won't get into that. But I think it's becoming a thing in football. As I show everybody on the screen, you can look at it later, the championship hat, all right, from the University of Maryland, men's championship. Uh, let's move on here. So, 18-point underdog. What do they have to do to win? Wayne, I'll start with you on this one. You have to be able to control the ball. Piggy's in there because he can run the ball. Maryland now has a run identity. There's an oar at that tailback spot between number six, Ty Johnson, who's up for some big awards. Lorenzo Harrison is back. Funk's in that mix. I don't know if you're going to see Anthony McFarland, who was one of the biggest recruits, and the offensive line has a run identity. Now, with Damian Prince at one side and... Derwin Gray on the other, the four-star recruits are going to finally have to come into their own, especially right off the bat here against Texas, and be able to block down the field and control the line of scrimmage. The biggest offensive lineman is guard Terrence Davis. He played as a freshman. He's their man-child, possible superstar. And you see Sean Christie breaking in at guard. He wears number 70 at center. Uh, Mason just posted the interview is Brendan Moore. He's from Texas. It's the first game he's played down there. His whole family's going to be there. Here's the difference this year in the line, all right? And I'll just read the numbers. Damian Prince, 6'3", 315. Terrence Davis, 6'3", 308. Brendan Moore, 6'3", 302. Sean Christie, 6'4", 305. And Derwin Gray, 6'5", 330. And there's no oars there. No oars. So, Mason... That is your starting offensive line. And that hopefully will make a difference offensively. They look like it. Mason, what's the chance there? What's our phrase of the week? Plays like... Uh, they look like Tarzan, Tarzan but... but Played like Jane. Sean Christie is definitely my key guy on this offensive line. A guy who's been in the system now for two years, gets a chance as a junior, and will he perform there? That's my key spot. I'm looking for this line to be really be able to move side to side but then get up the field and block the linebackers because that's the key when you're running the ball. And Maryland has a chance with Ty Johnson. It seems like every other time he touches the ball, he can take it to the house. They're a little thin at receiver, but we're not going to be a real throwing team. On defense, Bruce, do you think we can reverse the trend of getting run over? Uh, yes, I do. I mean, you have a lot of depth there that they haven't had. Right? You have guys that you could come in, which is why you have all the oars. Mm -hmm. uh, you have guys that can come in and be fresh, these guys won't get gassed. Will they be pushed around by Texas? I hope not. I really hope not. But Texas didn't push around many of anybody uh, last year, except when the quarterback ran up the middle. All right, swoops. Yeah. But uh, we're not going to face that. Listen, this is the mystery game. This is the game we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, obviously, the experts feel that Maryland doesn't have much of a shot to make an 18 point underdogs. And also to have one that, you know, to only have three and a half wins as the over-under, that bothers me. But uh, the more I look at the schedule, I think you can see the possibility that Zach Britton just closed the game for the O's. All right? Woo! Eight to seven. Ubaldo had some bad breaks today, gave up six runs. But what the heck, that's... Uh, Boy, those four solo home runs sort of turned the tide. Well, look at the clock. By the way, you are listening to... Uh, Coons for Turp Talk this Wednesday night and every Wednesday here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. We got myself, Bruce Posner, and the Viner guys in the house. And right now, you hear some clicking. You know what that is? They're leaving the Oriole game and coming over to 1300 to listen to us. Yeah. So you missed a description of the Texas game. All right, but we're continuing on. We're, we're not done with that yet. So this is a winnable game for a couple of reasons. Yeah, because your mind is dis your mind is distorted. This is not really a game that they're going to win. It's a game, slight chance, slight, slight chance of winning. Sure. So one of these days, and it yes. might not be today, and it might not be this year. You alluded to next year. All of these four-star recruits, all the talent, there's legit talent. When people talk about who's doing a good job in recruiting, hey, the name of Maryland comes up. DJ Durkin and the whole gang comes up. One of these days, you're going to go to a game and it's going to mesh. You have to exclude... Kevin Durant from that. 
All right. Yeah, well, we'll get to him. He, but anyway. He's got it coming to him. All right, KD cannot be, it's not one of the favorites of Maryland recruiting, but that's more basketball. But uh, we'll get into that later. We'll get into a lot of that on Saturday. Uh, and I love the Warriors, and I'll, I love Durant, but mm -hmm. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> not, <laughs> not anymore. anymore. Not anymore is correct. One of these days, Bruce, you know, this is going to work out. You go, hey, I knew this was happening because you keep, you're starting to layer the three-star, four-star classes one over another. Top 20 recruiting classes in the long run produce top 20 football programs. Excuses. This game is completely winnable for this football team. You're coming in to a school that has a new coach, has not done well recently, and you're going to come out and have a real chance against a ranked team. How many of those have we seen from Maryland since they've joined the Big Ten? You're forgetting one thing, and you guys are going to find out about it when you go to Austin this weekend. Lord willing, the weather stays okay uh, in Austin. Uh, there's no place like... Is it Darrell Royal Stadium? It is Darrell K. Royal Stadium. Darrell K. Royal Stadium. This is one of the great, great venues of the country. The lineup, how they walk in, the oh, streets yeah. beforehand. The night before, people yep. camp out all night. Yep, yep, yep. This is a special, special place. To me, uh, I I always thought, like, you know, you're going to get upset. West Virginia is one of the great home field advantages there is in the country, but not compared to Texas. Been to Nebraska, we've been to West Virginia, and recently we've been to Penn State. I just the way you talked about it, I, I'm getting fired up. I can't wait to be there. I love big time college football. Maybe we lose the game, but I want to give it a shot. I want to believe in what Mason says that at one point, sooner or later in our lifetime, we're going to walk into games like this and we're going to have a better than even chance of taking home the win. Maybe it's not Saturday, but it's coming far I, away. I'm glad you put it in your lifetime. Because I think that's how long it's going to take. Oh, boo! Oh. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> Listen. Now, well, lifetime could be next year. It could be any minute right but now. But my, my point is that this movement into this division of the Big Ten, we are now have the number one toughest schedule in the country. Well, when you hear you've got the number one toughest schedule in the country, it's not going to be easy to go 9-3. and three. It's not ever going to be easy to go 10-2. and two. You're facing $50 million machines, all right? $60 million machines. Right? Yeah. And, and it's not going to be easy. But it sure looks good for next year. And this year, we'll play it by year. But if I said to you right now, the Terps go 5-7 and seven this year, wouldn't you say that would be a good record for the year? Within a game or two, yeah. Six yeah. and six, five and seven, yes, that's where we are right now. And if we went three and nine, I don't think it's the end of the world. Oh, I do. As long as we don't lose any recruits off of it, I don't. Uh, if that's what happens, you don't know who's going to get hurt. I mean, you lose Piggy or you lose Kasim, and there's nothing left there, and suddenly we're right back uh, where we started before. Three months ago yesterday, University of Maryland men won the national championship in lacrosse. All right? I don't get greedy. I'll be ecstatic with six and six. I think it'd be fantastic. I think it would be, uh, with this schedule, having seven games where you know you're going to be dogs and maybe heavy dogs. Uh, there's no guarantee you're going to beat the Rutgers and the Indianas. There's no guarantee of anything. And Purdue, you know, or do we play Purdue? No, not this no, year, not but this we, year. Should. we should. I'm, play. Think, I'm already thinking December 1st we're playing Purdue on a Friday night in basketball. Really? The one game I want, I know we're up against the clock. Penn State. Penn State. That's all I want. Give me Penn State, I'll be happy. All right, well, they could be number one in the nation at that point. You don't know? <laughs> we don't. That is true. All right. It's Before we go to break, we're sporting these new Under Armour shirts. Turp Talk. You can Got them in red and white and black. Contact me if you'd like to get one. We'll sell it to you for what we pay. We're not in it, the clothing business. But uh, they're awesome. And, and new hats as well. And new hats as well. And you can see these all up on YouTube. Uh, we will see you on the other side of the break. We will see you in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300.